Hey, sis. I've got pretty exciting news to tell you. Oh, what is it? I'm getting married. What? That's amazing. Who's the guy? How come you never told me you were dating someone? Okay, okay. So, I met him when we bumped into each other at the grocery store. I'd seen him about quite a bit lately, actually. I thought he was really cute. Anyway, I figured that there was no way that he'd be interested in me, you know? He's funny, sophisticated, smart, and so handsome. Sounds like you hit the jackpot. I know, right? Well, that day I plucked up the courage and actually spoke to him. We really hit it off and went on a few dates. That's awesome, but why am I only hearing about this now? Well, we were keeping our relationship kind of hush-hush because he didn't want to jinx anything. We wanted to get to know each other before telling others we were together. I get it. It makes sense. I said... I suppose it's less pressure that way, but there's no way you're getting married before I've even met the guy. I mean, I need to see if he's good enough for my little sister. Hey, I'm only younger by like five minutes. Anyway, you already have met him. I have? When? Well, it's Lucas. So I'm guessing you know he's like well enough by now. Wait, wait, wait. Lucas? As in my fiance, Lucas? That Lucas? Well, yeah. <laughs> How many Lucas do you know? This is a joke. Why would I joke about this? Lucas and I are properly in love and we're getting married. No, you aren't. I'm marrying Lucas and it's happening in three days. You know, you've always been so jealous of me. It's kind of pathetic, really. But to try and stop me from marrying the man I love, that's just sad, even for you. And by the way, you're not the one getting married in three days. I am. What? I've already told you, Lucas proposed to me. We figured that we would just use the wedding you planned as it was just going to go to waste anyway, seeing as you and he aren't getting married anymore. But how did this happen? Why would he do something like this? Look, it's no secret that I'm better than you in pretty much every way. I mean, I know we're twins, but I clearly got the better half of all the genes whilst you got the dregs. The reason why Lucas wants to marry me instead of you is because I'm way smarter and more talented than you. A rising actor like Lucas, Need someone with the same star quality. You just don't have that going for you. I'm sorry to say it, but it's the truth, and it's better that you hear it from someone you love now. Someone I love? Oh no, <laughs> that's flying out the window pretty fast. How can you be so mean? I'm your sister. We're supposed to look out for one another. So stealing my fiance away, that's looking out for me? Ugh, <sighs> look, you need to get over it and fast. I've tried to be patient with you, but you're really getting on my last nerve now. Why do you even want to be with Lucas? Not too long ago, you told me that he was a failed actor who wouldn't amount to much and that I could do much better. Yeah, well, that was before he got that part in that film. He's actually on his way to becoming a Hollywood star, and I want to be there when he finally makes it. So let me get this straight. The only reason you want to be with him is because of his fame and money? Look. Whichever way you look at it, you and Lucas just weren't a good match. What do you mean by that? Well, he's just way out of your league. He needs someone who cares about how she looks just as much as he does, and that just isn't you. Wow, thanks. Whatever. Look, I only texted to tell you that you need to stand down. Lucas is my fiance now, and you better not get in our way. It'd be a shame to let all of your meticulous planning go to waste though. So, as a wedding present to me and my new husband, you can just leave all your wedding plans in place. We'll make sure they get put to good use. I can't believe that my own sister would do something so cruel to me. How can you live with yourself, taking away the man that I love? You'll get over it. Like I said, you two wouldn't have lasted anyway. You're a really horrible person, Hazel. And I can't believe you're my sister. Whatever, just don't ruin my wedding. Keep at least some dignity. After all, you couldn't even keep your fiancé from running to your sister. What does that say about you? Not as much as it says about you, that's for sure. Amelia, sweetie, I just heard from your sister that she's gonna be marrying Lucas now? What's that all about? I don't even know, Dad. She just messaged me this afternoon saying how she and Lucas had been dating behind my back and that he had proposed to her. Something about wanting my prettier, smarter, and more talented sister over me. How could they do something like that? Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. It's okay, Dad. I'd rather he show his true colors now than after we got married. I still can't believe that Hazel would do this, though. What is she thinking? 
I don't know, and honestly, I don't care. She's no sister of mine anymore. Well, what are you gonna do? About what? The wedding, of course. You can't just let them get away with how they've treated you. I won't let you, for one thing. But what can I do? They both seem pretty set on marrying each other, and I definitely don't want Lucas back after what he's done. You just leave it to me, sweetheart. I'll sort everything out. So, did you see the picture I sent of me in my wedding dress? I look beautiful, don't I? Like a Hollywood star. Sure. Are you still being grumpy over the fact that I'm marrying Lucas today, and you aren't? Get over it already. I don't want your moody attitude bringing down the vibe in my wedding. It cost way too much to have it ruined by you. There is nothing on earth that could make me come to that wedding today. Whatever. You're just being petty and jealous. It really isn't a good look on you. In fact, if you keep it up, you'll never find a husband. How can you be so heartless? Do you really not care about what you've done and how you've hurt me? Look, the facts are that I am just so much better than you. Lucas could see that, and he wanted someone who he could be proud to call his wife. It sucks for you, but I can't help that I am better than you. The sooner you accept that, the happier you'll be. I never knew just how conceited a person could be. Now I do. I hope you enjoy your wedding. Though I wouldn't be surprised if karma finds you. What do you mean by that? I guess you'll find out soon. Happy wedding day. Amelia, how could you do this to me? Do what? You know exactly what. I can't believe you took all of the wedding stuff away and replaced it with these horrible banners. There are no flowers, no cake, there's not even any tableware. And all of the banners and flyers saying how we went behind your back and how Lucas cheated on you? Well, what did you expect? That I'd waste all of my hard-earned money on a wedding that my own sister stole from me? No way. The only reason you still have the venue is because it was in Lucas's name, not mine. Otherwise, you'd be getting married in the rain in a field somewhere. As for the banners, though, I have no clue what you're on about. I didn't make any banners. Well, they're all over the place with the story of why I'm the bride and not you. Calling us cheaters and horrible things like that. People are beginning to talk. Dad did say to leave it up to him. I guess he didn't like the way the two of you treated me. For such a perfect daughter, you really disappointed mom and dad. I can't believe you told them. You're such a horrible sister. I'm the horrible sister. No. A horrible sister is someone who steals a fiancé and tries to steal a wedding that doesn't belong to them. It's someone who is so cold and heartless and downright mean that they don't care who their actions affect as long as they're okay. If you want to see a truly horrible sister, then you need to look in the mirror. I don't care about your self-righteous attitude right now. Get over here and fix the mess you've made, now. No. It's your problem, so you deal with it. Oh, and don't bother to talk to me again. I'm cutting you out of my life. I don't need someone so vile and toxic dragging me down. See you later. Hey baby, how are you today? I'm fine. Oh, um, are you sure? Yes, why? Well, you just seem to be being quite short with your answers. I just wanted to make sure that you were okay. Yeah, I'm good. Are you at home? Um, why do you want to know? I just know that it's your day off today and I was wondering what you were doing. I thought maybe I could get off work a little bit earlier and maybe come see you and we could go out or something. Maybe have a date night. Oh, well, I'm not at home, so I don't think that we can do that. Oh, where are you? Out. Out? Anywhere specific? 
No, I just wanted some time alone. Really? Are you sure that's what you're doing? Yes, I'm sure that's what I'm doing. Why are you doubting me? Do you honestly not trust me that much? Jeez, talk about an unhealthy relationship if you can't even trust me to go out and have a little bit of me time. Yeah, it's just I'm sitting in the car outside the house and I can clearly see that your car is still in the drive, but so is a strange car I've never seen before. And forgive me if I'm wrong, but we didn't have any handymen, workers, or whatever kind of people coming over today that I know about. So, whose car is it? Wait, you said you'd be home in a little bit. Not that you were home now. Is that a problem? No, actually it isn't. The car is Daphne's. It's her new one, and she asked me if she could park it here for a while, whilst her drive is being repaved. Well, that's a coincidence, isn't it? What is? Well, I stopped by Daphne's house on the way over. I needed to give Steve some of his tools that I borrowed, and her drive was perfectly fine. No one was working on it or anything, and she never mentioned getting a new car at all. Strange, isn't it? Fine, then. You want the truth? Why don't you come and see it for yourself? I'd rather you tell me the truth, to be honest. It's the least you owe me. Fine. The truth is that right now I'm upstairs, in the bedroom, with my boyfriend. Uh-huh, and is this a one-off thing, or have you done this before? This is definitely not a one-off thing. I've been seeing Justin for months now. And you didn't have any idea at all, lol. I finally found my true soulmate. You've found your soulmate? Yeah. I met him in one of the clubs that I went to with my friends about six months ago. We really hit it off from the moment we met. We danced all night and even spent the night together. Since then, we haven't been able to stay away from one another. We've been sneaking around, meeting each other either here or at his or at a hotel. It's been quite fun, really. He's so much better than you. He's fun, adventurous, and very handsome. Uh-huh. I see. Is that all you've got to say? I've been cheating on you for months now, and you can't even be bothered to argue with me about it? How pathetic are you? Well, why would I want to argue and plead with a woman who clearly has no remorse over what she's done to me? You don't care that you've broken my heart or that you've just completely destroyed all faith and trust I ever had in you and that it's probably very likely that I won't be able to trust another woman for a very long time. So why would I want to plead for you to repent for what you've done and stay with me? For all I know, you could just turn around and find someone else to cheat on me with. Well, I mean, have you met you? I don't think anyone would blame me if I did. And why is that? I haven't done anything wrong to you, ever. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've been a very good and loving husband. I often bring you little gifts and things that you like and try my hardest to make sure that you're happy. So why would people not blame you for cheating on me? Well, yeah, you might do all of that, but let's face it, it's quite a sappy thing to do. Huh? Yeah. Like, it's nice every now and then, but the fact that you're always nice and kind and thoughtful is kind of annoying, actually. It always makes me feel like I'm not putting in enough effort into the relationship or something like that. And you know what? What? Sometimes it would be nice to have an argument, to not feel like a perfectly happy couple all the time. It just gets so boring. I can't deal with it. So, because you can't deal with the fact that I'm a good person and a nice husband, you decided to cheat on me? Would you rather I argue with you over the smallest and stupidest of things, constantly berating you and never putting your feelings and thoughts first? Because that's just something I can't do. I'm a nice person and I like to spoil my wife because I love her. I don't want to be arguing with her all the time. That just doesn't sound like a good or healthy relationship to me, and it's definitely not something that I would want to be a part of. And that's what makes you so boring. I need some fire in my relationship. 
someone who will challenge me. You're just not that person. So I had to go and find someone who would be able to do that for me. Whether you like it or not. Well then, good for you. I'll chuck all of your stuff in the front yard tomorrow for you to come and get it. As for right now, you and your boyfriend can get dressed and get out of my house. Like, right now. Huh? What do you mean, your house? This house is mine. I'm the woman, so I should get the house if we split up. That's just the way that things work, so you need to deal with it. Um, no, actually, it isn't how things work. Yes, it is. I live in this house, so it's mine. I pay all the bills and the mortgage, so it's actually mine. What? That's not true. It doesn't matter who pays the mortgage. The house is always the woman's property. Nope, because I have physical financial evidence that I've been paying for the house, and the fact that the contract is in my name, I get the house. And I get to decide who stays in it and who doesn't. And surprisingly, you're not someone that I want in my house anymore, so either get your things together and move them out yourself, or I'll just chuck them into the street, okay? What? Why are you being like this? Why are you being so apathetic? You should be fighting to keep me, not helping me move out. I thought you loved me. Yeah, well, lately, I've just found myself not wanting to be around you. You're horrible on a daily basis towards me, and you keep disrespecting me no matter what I do. It's never good enough for you. I don't want someone like that in my life. Not to mention that you're incredibly selfish and self-centered. I just can't stand your childish behavior anymore. I mean, it's like trying to deal with a toddler. But... You leaving is probably the best thing that can happen for me. Fine then. I will leave. And when you come begging for me to take you back, you better hope I'm in a forgiving mood. I have a lot more self-respect than to do something like that. Especially to someone like you. I deserve someone who actually wants to be with me. Not someone who's gonna cheat on me the second they get bored. Well then, you might have to work on how interesting you are if you don't want women to cheat on you. Just saying. Whatever, May. I'm done talking to you now. I'm gonna go, so please don't bother trying to text me again. I don't want to hear anything that you have to say. I'll leave for an hour, and by the time I get back, you better be gone from my house, along with your boyfriend. You can come back tomorrow to collect the rest of your stuff, but for tonight, you only have an hour, so get what you think you'll need. God, you are such an asshole. Fine then, I'll take what I can, but you better not touch anything else until I can get it tomorrow. Trust me, I don't want any of your rubbish. Whatever, I'm going now. Oh, uh, hello. Is this Felix? Yes, this is Felix. I'm sorry, but your number isn't in my phone. Who is this? It's me. I'm sorry, I recently got a new phone and haven't had a chance to transfer all my contacts over. Oh, um, it's your wife. Sophie? Ah, uh, no, it's May. Hi. Oh. May, why are you messaging me? Well, I was just wanting to check in. It has been three years. E yes, it has been quite a while. How have you been? Yeah, I've been doing well, thank you. And, and you? Not too bad. It's been a bit strange and different without you, though. Well, that was your choice. You had every option to be with me and to be happy, but you chose not to do that. Ah, uh, yeah. I guess I did. But still, you must have missed me as well, right? You can't actually live without me, I'm guessing, as I'm kind of unforgettable. But don't worry, I won't make you beg or anything to take me back. I'm willing to just forget about everything that happened all those years ago and go back to how we were. I think I would quite like a man to treat me right again. To shower me with love and gifts, and just be generally nice and safe. I've missed having someone dependable like that in my life. Like you. 
What are you going on about, May? I thought you were living with your soulmate now. Yeah, I am. I mean, I was. We kind of broke up. I'm sorry to hear that, but it still doesn't explain why you're messaging me. Well, we broke up because he was cheating on me, and I don't know, it left me feeling truly awful. Like, I thought we were so happy, so why did he do that to me? I couldn't say. It really messed me up for a little while and made me lose all trust in men. Plus, with him gone, I had to get a job of my own in order to continue paying the rent on the apartment I am living in and all of the other bills as well. It just got me thinking about how I had pretty much done the same to you and how terrible you must have felt. How it probably damaged you and your faith in women. So I wanted to apologize and I thought that maybe we could give us another go? Yeah, I mean, I hear you're doing really well in your work as well and that you've been promoted to a really high position in the company. Obviously, I know that this means that you're being paid quite a nice wage. So, with your salary, we could have a lot of fun and make up for lost time. Plus, I would be able to quit my job and go back to being a housewife again. I was much happier doing that than I am working in this fast food place. So, what do you say? No thanks. Huh? Come on. You can't say that we didn't have a good time together. It felt like we were in love. So, at least let's give it a chance. Sorry, I'm a married person. Huh? What do you mean you're married? How could you do that to me? Do what to you? We weren't even together for the last three years. That doesn't matter. You should have waited for me to come back, if I chose to, and pinned over me for the rest of your life. Not gone and married some other woman. Besides, how is it even possible that you're married? I don't remember signing any divorce papers. That means that your marriage is not legal. I'd send the papers to you within the first three months of finding out you were cheating on me. You signed them all saying that you didn't want to be married to such a sap anyway. It's not my fault if you forgot that you did that. No, that's not fair. It doesn't count. May, after all these years, you still haven't changed. You don't care about me or my happiness, you just want someone to pay your way through life whilst you do whatever you want. I don't want to get back together with you and I never will. I'm incredibly happy now and I've even married someone new so there is no chance that I'm going to ruin my relationship with her for you. She's amazing and sweet and really great. I'm not going to mess that up. Not to mention that she loves the fact that I bring her little presents and that I'm a loving and kind husband. She thinks it's one of the best things about me, actually. But what about me? You've got what you want, don't you? You're free to live your life without the annoyance of an annoying husband and his too kind ways. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want. But I've changed my mind. I don't want that anymore. It's boring and lonely. Well, that's your problem, I'm afraid. I've moved on. I suggest you try and do the same as well. But no other man that I've been with these last few years has even come close to treating me the way that you did. They don't get me little gifts just to cheer me up if I've had a bad day. They don't get me flowers just because they thought they looked pretty and that I would like them. And they definitely don't seem to care about what I'm feeling if I'm not feeling my best. They just tell me to stop being so moody. I want our relationship back. You lost our relationship with me the moment you made the choice to actively go out and look for another man to cheat on me with. I know my worth, May, and I know that I deserve to be with someone who appreciates what I do and how I treat them. You simply couldn't appreciate me, so you just lost me. That's all there is to it. Now, I'm gonna go, May. Please don't contact me again. Goodbye, May. After that, May did try to contact me again, and she even messaged my wife over social media, but we both told her to stop harassing us lest we get the police involved, and that she would never have a chance to get back together with me again, as me and Sophie were happily married and 
plan on staying that way for the rest of our lives. Not long after that, May stopped messaging me and I haven't heard from her since. The last I heard, she was still working at the fast food place. As for me, I'm happily married and adore my wife. She's honestly the best thing that has ever happened to me and I count myself incredibly lucky to have met Sophie when I did. Our relationship is going strong and we're even expecting a baby. I honestly couldn't think of anything better in life than to have a loving family who I can shower with love for the rest of my life. It just goes to show that you should never take those you love for granted, as you never know what you might lose if you're not careful.